Julius Malema and the economic freedom fighters are making a long-term strategic play in Africa. Today, Julius Malema gave a speech in Kenya at the launch of the Pan-African Institute. This launch was actually well attended. And if you look at the footage, you'll see that there were thousands of Kenyan students inside the venue and also outside the venue. The event was covered by multiple media organizations in Kenya, in South Africa, and many other parts of Africa, giving it a far wider reach than just the people in the room. It seems as if Julius has found an audience on the continent and has found a community of people who admire his courage, who admire his rhetoric, and also who may even agree with his ideas. There are not so many young African opposition politicians who are continentally recognizable. Right now, there are several prominent names that are known across the continent. You've got Bobby Wine of Uganda. He's well-recognized and well-respected. You have Musi Maimane, who's also well-recognized and well-respected across the continent because he speaks about a lot of um, issues with democracy on the continent, be it Zimbabwe or Zambia or Uganda, and he has relationships with a lot of these other opposition leaders. But above all of those names, it seems that Julius Malema has the most brand recognition on the continent. The presidents, of course, uh, across Africa are well-known. Sir Ramaphosa is known. Um, all of the other presidents are well-known. But a lot of people are not looking at them as the future, and they're not looking at them in a positive light. Many people view African leaders as part of the problem, not part of the solution. So they're looking at the opposition benches for what the future is going to hold for Africa. And by 2050, Africa will be the most populated um, continent and will be the most uh, largest market or will be the largest market rather in Africa, I mean in the world, with 2.5 billion by some estimates. Right now the African population is at about 1.4 billion. And that's going to be in a time where you have political organizations like the EFF. So in his actual speech, Malema touched on a lot of themes that would have found resonance with audiences across Africa. He spoke about the history of Pan-Africanism. He spoke about the need for um, economic uh, progression of Africans. He spoke about the economic exploitation of Africa by you know, various countries and companies for their own benefit to the detriment of Africa. He spoke about the performance of African leaders and how they've underperformed. He also spoke about ideas such as you know, having the Afri an African army, having um, one African currency. And he traversed a lot of topics, even spoke about the, the arts history. And he was really trying to appeal to a variety of people. This, I think, is in line with an agenda within the EFF to try to have a footprint in multiple countries to become a continental party, which competes in elections across the continent. They already have presence in Namibia, for example, in the Namibian parliament. And I think what you will continue to see over time is uh, a progression of the party. I say that they are making a long-term strategic move because long-term strategy is not about um, three to five years. That's medium term. Long-term strategy looks at periods between five, 10, 15 to 20 years. And it may very well be that in 20 years time, when Julius Malema is approaching 60 or 65, that his political party has got a presence in a lot of countries. The EFF right now is a 10-year-old party, and they've managed to gain a lot of traction in the Southern African region in 10 years. And at the beginning, in 2013, they only started in a small community hall, although Julius Milema already had brand presence, but now they are widely recognized. It may very well be that this meeting in this in this hall may be the beginning also of a spread of the EFF um, into other regions such as East Africa. Uh, West Africa, I don't think they have as much representation or footprint, but they definitely have representation. I mean, they definitely have attention in the East African market, and they've, they've also got attention in the Southern African market. And it seems to me that there's a long-term play here by the economic freedom fighters um, to build presence. And there's also an attempt, I think, by Julius Malema to cement his legacy 
beyond South African parliamentary politics. I think there's a recognition that he could represent far more than just, uh, you know, short-term uh, political machinations uh, within the South African space. So he seems to be going for a mantle that so far has been reserved for individuals like Thomas Sankara, uh, Patrice Lubumba, individuals such as um, Walter Rodney, uh, individuals who have provided intellectual um, leadership in the discourse space. And it seems as if there's also an attempt by Julius here to secure his legacy position within the discourse of uh, pan-African intellectualism and leadership. That is a political trend that is being accepted by African heads of state and government where one country convinces all 54 heads of African states and government. The United States of America, France, China, Russia and United Kingdom convene all 54 heads of states and government for a meeting and they all go following each other like Casey and Jojo as a head of states to listen to one head of state, 51 of them. Sometimes they disrespect them to a point where they put all 54 heads of states of Africa in a school bus to go and listen to one head of state. What happened to these men because all of them, majority of them are men? What happened to these fathers who go and bow combined to one man, even if it's Putin? Why would they all follow each other and go and listen to one person? What happened to their dignity and their authority as leadership? They must have leadership qualities to know that Putin is equal to them, that China is equal to their own single country, irrespective of their size, because what matters is sovereignty. And if China recognizes that sovereignty, will respect the president of that sovereign country as an individual.